G'day viewers, Jason, Journey to Love Electrical Services. I am in Henley Brook, Perth today, and this is an existing uh, SIG Energy system that I have previously installed not so long ago. And um, on completion, my client decided we're gonna add another couple of batteries. So that's our existing one. We got one, two, three, four, eight kilowatt hour batteries. And in the back of the van here, we've got another two eight kilowatt hour batteries. So apparently it's just a matter of plug and play with these. You don't have to muck around with different state of charge levels uh, like you do with some other um, inverter products and storage systems. And fortunately, when I did the installation, I have left enough cable behind here for all my data, my DC and my AC connections to raise the inverter or the energy controller as they call it, up another two modules. So I'd say that's gonna come up to about here. Um, so I should have ample cable there to do that. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got my hoist there, cause these batteries weigh around, I think it's 78 kilos each, uh, which is definitely way too heavy for me to lift on my own. Um, so I'll uh, get them installed and uh, see if it is actually just a case of plug and play and how it all goes. Okay, so I noticed when the energy controller was sitting on top of the battery, there was a small gap here. The gap was bigger here than it was over there. So I thought, while I've got the energy controller off, I'll have a look at what's going on there. I thought I might have got something dropped down there or fouling on it or something. And then I've had a look under the bottom of the energy controller here, and I thought, well, these screws look like they're sticking out a bit. Um, and then I gave this bit of a move and it, I discovered it's loose. I thought, okay, well that's not ideal. But I think what I'm actually looking at is a very clever system from SIG Energy that enables these locating pins to engage before any contact is made with these pins so as not to damage them. And if there is any differences in the manufacturing, this little plate will move uh, just to allow for any slight differences between the battery module and the energy controller. That's what I think, anyway. I'm gonna have a look under another battery and see if it's the same. Um, there is a seal there, so it doesn't really matter that that's a little bit loose going into the energy controller, because that's our seal there, uh, sealing it from the atmosphere. So. Despite the fact that's loose, I think that might actually be a very clever little system so that the pins can all locate themselves without doing any damage. Okay, so another two modules are installed. Um, relatively straightforward. Um, just like I was advised, it really is just a, simply a case of stacking the extra batteries on and turning it on. I've checked in the app, it's acknowledged the new batteries. Even though they're different, um, at different levels of charge, uh, unlike a lot of the other battery systems, they will just balance themselves out um, internally. And that would happen pretty quickly on this system if they've got 24 kilowatts peak of solar on the roof. Um, I did do this one on my own using this hoist and a few strips. I foolishly forgot to keep the handles for lifting the batteries that come with the energy controller. Oh, I did mean to keep them on site, but um, unfortunately I did throw them away. Um, oh, it's doing something now. Not quite sure. We'll check that out. It did have all green lights, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, so what happened there is it had a trouble doing a firmware upgrade, which would have been on the two new batteries that we installed. Um, it shut down, restarted, and it's all good. Um, but interestingly, before it shut down, it was pumping a massive 16 kilowatts straight into the batteries. Um, the, the noise from the fans on the energy controller was actually quite loud. Um, you definitely wouldn't want it making, that's your two fans there and it really was quite loud. Um, so clearly the inverter was working really hard and uh, you wouldn't want that near a bedroom window or something like that if you've got a shift worker. 
Um, incidentally, the gateway does make a little bit of a hum as well, but it's not too bad. Uh, so yeah, I did that on my own using the hoist, using some straps. It really wasn't ideal in the manual. It says once you go above three batteries that you should really use a, a crane uh, of some sorts, which you can, you know, something similar to that, but a crane instead of a hoist. Um, and there's some fixing points on the, on the batteries in there just there, which is where the handles normally clip onto. I foolishly threw the handles out with the um, uh, packaging from when I uh, finished the installation off before. Um, so that also made it a little bit difficult to handle, um, but otherwise all good. Uh, very simple process, a little bit time consuming on my own, but um, certainly doable and um, easily done. The, um, these batteries are 78 kilos each according to the manual and they definitely feel every bit of that when you're moving them on your own. Uh, so with this full stack of six, it really is quite, I'm just gonna try and change the angle on my phone. It really is quite heavy and I'd draw attention to those fixing points and what you're fixing it to and also the foundations. Uh, they're also really important uh, because you definitely do not want this big stack of batteries falling away from its uh, fixings. Uh, so there we go, all good, simple process. Thank you.